Hey kids, do you like dopamine? Because guess what? Mullet Mad Jack is pretty much a game that will deliver a concentrated dose of it directly down your optic nerve. In essence, Mullet Mad Jack is a relentlessly paced arcade FPS styled like an 80s anime OVA where you get 10 seconds of life, you kill in order to stop the timer hitting zero, and your chief goal is to save the influencer princess from evil robot billionaires. Why? So you can win some sweet ass sneakers, that's why. Action is better than words. If that already sounds like a good time to you, then you can pretty much stop the video here and just go play it, because it is as ridiculously fun as it sounds. In terms of other FPS games you could possibly equate this to, the nearest relative I could generally point to would be Post Void. Similarly paced in that you less explore and navigate each of Mullet Mad Jack's multiple floors and more that you just slam yourself full tilt ahead, blasting and kicking away at whatever robot douchebag stands in your way. If Post Void was the endoskeleton of the idea that forms the basis of Mad Jack's gameplay, then the rest of this game adds to that formula in a fashion that transforms it into a fully kitted out T-800 model Terminator with an addiction to soda. You know that meme about locking in? That's pretty much how I felt the entire time while playing Mullet Mad Jack. Despite how chaotic it might look on the surface, there are enough vibrant tells between enemies and interactable elements of each floor here that after a relatively short time, all you need to do is glance to understand what you're dealing with, that there's an enemy you can kick into a fan, an extinguisher on the wall you can explode, a vent that you can slide through like an absolute badass while drop kicking an enemy on the other side. Variety here really is the spice of life when it comes to doling out those environmental kills. And on top of what I've already mentioned, you've got lasers, electrical conduits, even bigger fans, and honestly, watching those robots go splat never gets old. Probably doesn't hurt that they don't skimp on the ketchup either. The weaponry in here is no slouch either. You've got a selection ranging from the revolver, the SMG, a chunky as all hell shotgun, katanas, plasma gun, and of course, a rail gun. Now, you can only really carry one weapon at a time, and you can choose your weapons from a possible selection at the end of each floor. Further to that, you can bag extra, more powerful varieties of each weapon, scaling up to level three, which just shred. And personally, I was somewhat partial to the shotgun. Not to mention the SMGs, but even though I didn't find it through my initial full run, you can bet your bottom dollar that I'm going to be doing another run so I can get that railgun up to level 3. It just, it just has to be done. Extra perks can also help augment everything around your weaponry. You've got ricochet possibility, piercing possibility, there's even a shuriken perk that will occasionally just send those flying all over the place. There's, there's a lot of good stuff you can add to increase your lethality. That said, if there was one major worry I had about Mullet Mad Jack, it would be that there was potential for it to get a little monotonous. As with most things, if you spend enough time doing the same thing over and over, you're bound to get bored, no matter how madcap or bombastic it may be. But where Mad Jack sidesteps this particular problem is the fact that it always manages to sprinkle in these little switch-ups to the experience to prevent it going stale. As I've already mentioned, each chapter tends to introduce new enemies and hazards. You've got those progressive upgrades you can choose. But what I haven't mentioned so far are the bosses. Narratively and literally, the bosses are the gatekeepers of your progress. If you die before you defeat that chapter's boss, you get sent back down to the bottom floor of that chapter's chunk, and you'll have to deal with a fresh suite of randomized layouts, as well as rebuilding your upgrades. Having played through on normal, I wouldn't say that any of the bosses here were particularly ball-breaking. That said, they do serve up a nice bit of variety from one to the next. Sure, there's an overwhelming element of shoot it till it dies to most, but there's still enough to them that you'll be taking advantage of your mobility at the very least, and in some cases engaging with interesting one-off setups that force you to smash at least more than two brain cells together. When it comes to the overall aesthetic, the style of this game, I absolutely adore Mullet Mad Jack. I think it's safe to say that I am very much in the target demographic here when it comes to its particular over-the-top, ultra-violent 80s anime stylings, particularly with that VHS fuzz filter on the main menu. It just, it just gives me the warm and fuzzies, what can I say? Not to mention the music, which absolutely fits the vibe throughout and is tremendously propulsive as you careen through those levels, blasting away and burying a variety of sharp and sometimes blunt objects into robot skulls. 
There's also a playful degree of sledgehammer satire going on in here too, blowing up to ridiculous proportions the idea of a hyper-capitalist society where AI has pretty much taken over the rampant desires of consumerism, amping up consumption for the sake of consumption, and presenting a scenario where influencer and viewer alike are pretty much commodities that feed into an endless self-perpetuating churn of live-streamed ultraviolence and, more importantly, merchandising opportunities. Oh, and yes, if you were wondering about the in-game reasoning for that 10 seconds of life you granted, it's literally gifted to you by how much you keep your audience entertained. That being through the variety and frequency of your kills. You passed the test! You're not dead! <laughs> I know a few people might find the Peace Corps liaison yapping away at you between missions here a bit 50-50 in terms of tolerability, but hey, there is literally an on-screen prompt to deal with that, and as for me, I was raised on this shit, so you'd have to inflict a hell of a lot more on me in order to make my particular ears bleed. Another touch here that I really enjoyed was the fact that there's a dedicated option on the main menu to go through a virtual unboxing experience. I'm, I'm already nostalgic for that era of elaborate goody stuffed big boxes, so this stuff put a big old grin on my face, as did pretty much the entirety of the whole game. Mullet Mad Jack is genuinely a fun as all heck distillation of those core raw elements in an FPS that get the blood pumping, the speed, the stakes, the violence, and I can honestly state that I would be more than happy to dive back into this and do it all over again. It may be relatively short overall depending on what difficulty you play as, but man, it is oh so sweet. Like I said, dopamine directly to the brain. And personally speaking, I feel like a fair few games could stand to be just, you know, a little shorter these days. They tend to outstay their welcome. In all honesty, it's better to be here for a good time, not a long time. And if that doesn't appeal to you, well, good job this game has an endless mode then, isn't it? Welcome to the Endless Tour! <laughs> but yes, Mullet Mad Jack, highly recommended. While I've got you here, however, I'd like to bring us all slightly crashing back down to reality by making you aware of the catastrophic flooding that has affected Brazil recently. In fact, a member of the Mullet Mad Jack dev team found themselves trapped as a result of these floods. I genuinely hope that they've been able to get assistance and aid, and if you have anything to spare, even a dollar, I implore you to consider donating to the Brazil Foundation which can help supply those displaced with food, medicine, and shelter throughout the course of this honestly unprecedented flooding. Link, if you're interested, is in the comments, and for those affected, I hope things improve very soon. In any case, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching, and big thank you to my patrons who help support all of my shenanigans. Until next time, this has been Mr. Icarus. Take care out there. Icarus out.